Savali. 40,000 miles around the world with the Glivo. And I can only say one thing about it, it was amazing. In the last episode, we announced that we are going to stick with Outremer and we are going to sail the new flagship in the future. Um, I have to say up front, uh, the drawings you're going to see are, well, just drawings. There's nothing final yet. I'm really, really proud that uh, we managed to uh, secure sailing on hull number one of, uh, of this boat. The first edition of our book was published and a lot of people were interested in reading it. Uh, just to get back on the last uh, episode where we showed you a couple of glimpses of our new Utomer flagship. It is an Utomer, it's going to be the biggest one they ever built. You have to understand that you are in a very, very, very early stage of the development of this boat. They have started, there are renderings, there is even a master already for the hulls. But a lot of details still have to be designed. I am limited in what I can and cannot tell you at this point in time. If you are interested in any of the two new models, <laughs> to give away something again, it does make sense to contact the guys at Utomer first and see what they will tell you. One-on-one -on -one, I think um, uh, they're pretty open about the boats but they uh, are not far enough to do a public announcement about them. And once you've got uh, the base information I'm of course available to discuss the details and your ideas and to take it with us in the, um, in the setup of our boat. Plenty of time, it's gonna be ready second quarter probably of uh, 27. On the way back from the Cambojo to La Grande Motte, Mark and me, we were just the two of us and we took the time to really enjoy the last couple of weeks on Great Circle and we visited some nice places on the coast of France before we went back to La Grande Motte for the Outremer week. Behind that cliff, and this is the village of Cassis. Well, oh, just in time again to roll the Jenniger away. Without the main, that would have been an issue. Just, just, just in time. And two, 32 knots, 33 knots. And now it's calming down a little bit. In the evening we had an anchor shot together with Moonshot and Atlas. We have visited Cassis once with the lagoon. I was really looking forward to seeing it again and we loved it.
These are the islands across from Marseille. Pretty deserted. last leg we're sailing with great circle probably one of the most boring ones we ever did the only exciting stuff was to find the little fishing flags the radar even sees them which is kind of surprising almost back in La Grand Mot verse 74 on Ponton P waiting for us and then next week is gonna be Utumea week a little bit over one mile to go <laughs> and uh, well this is the last time we're gonna moor this great circle and we're going to push our luck a little bit as uh, normally Marijke always moors the boat and now I'm going to practice well there's not a lot of wind, only 10 knots so it should be fine and I can always and I can always shout Marijke, Marijke, help, help he didn't need to shout help help because he did a perfect maneuver. So we moored great circles safely without any scratches back into the arena. There's a lot of training going on both in the marina and outside. Jean-Marc next to us and also Nikki is uh, training with all the ladies.
Blue Water Sailing Workshop. And basically we are answering questions of all those owners about the configuration of their boat and which options there are. And uh, here are the stars of the show. It's Loic. Loic is the performance guy, he's the experienced sailor. He was French champion windsurfing, but still <laughs> you have to know a little bit about wind and speed and stuff. And, uh, and this is Marijke. Marijke is the comfort uh, sailor. She's the cruising lady. Uh, but she really knows how to sail as well. Actually, it was never a surprise. We knew it in advance. We were prepared and did the right way we know. I was ready and prepared for something up to 50 kilometers of weather. And then we had to empty the boat. So we're cleaning out the boat. Everything has to go out. This will stay in the grommet, together with the stuff in the cockpit. And this we will try to take home. The surveyors checking the boat is probably most important for the next owner. They're going to put the carbon cross back. On Monday the boat's going to sail to Canet and Rochillon, so they have time to do it there. So the third and last one. With the poop. Bon weekend! Ciao ciao! So the last time we locked the boat. Yeah. Strange. Bye so bye. we leave this open? Yeah, I think so. We're even gonna leave the AST tender, but we'll get the new one on the new boat. We checked everything and double checked everything. I don't think we could have taken a lot more, <laughs> but it fits still pretty good. We just have to see that we keep busy in the meantime. We're building our house and it's going to be finished in the next half year. We have plans to participate one way or the other in the Nordic Rally. It's a very interesting uh, in-between event uh, that uh, Grand Large has uh, organized. It's going to start uh, New Year's Eve in the Canaries. Canaries to Madeira, Azores, Ireland. Straight through Scotland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, England, France and back to Portugal um, before the start of the next Clevo in September 25. Whether we will be on our own boat or covering the rally from other boats, that remains to be seen and I'll keep you up to date as soon as possible. In the next episode, Mark is going to sail again on the Outermere 52.